Oh, hey, I'm on as well. We still don't have quorum at the moment, so we need one more for quorum. Hey, I'll, I'll be on. I'm just not on video yet. I'm running behind. Oh, it's me. okay, Annie. It's okay. <laughs> Your voice is what we need to hear. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, Armel did say she wasn't going to make it today. She had um, eye surgery this morning, and she was hoping she would be better by um, this afternoon. She's had this procedure done before, but um, she won't be attending today's meeting. So, but we do need one more for a quorum. And I realized that I'm supposed to email um, someone's assistant, and I realized I didn't do that. And I just remembered before the meeting started that oh no, I never sent out the panel invites. I forgot to do that part of the Zoom. Um, I wish it would just put it in as a template. It would make my life so much easier. I can I can ping Jonathan as well. I don't know how long we're supposed to, to, to stay on before we call it quits, huh? Well, I think probably in, until, I'd say it's at 625. Okay. Well, I mean, if Jonathan's just running behind. Um, yeah, we'll be and, okay, I think. Yeah, uh, I think. The, I just text him as well, so hopefully I'll hear back. I didn't help that I, I just realized, because usually at least those Zoom notices seeing the meetings coming up as a reminder that it's, um, happening <laughs> yeah. and it's i usually have it on my calendar to remind me too and it's, you know i got a little confused there when we when we jumped back to monday <laughs> well, no and the other thing too is i got thrown off because of the holiday and then i thought i had two meetings this week and then i realized oh no the commission's next week because there was more time between the beginning of the month and the commission meeting. So, so and I was panicked last week because it, it hasn't helped that we're short staffed again. And then I'm still yeah. debating on if we're gonna um, reduce our hours. So, just to, yeah. to manage the staff. So, okay, so hey, Jonathan. So, so now we, we do have quorum now. I'm also, waiting. I know Joe Jennings was supposed to be coming. I know Barbara's not coming because she's on a cruise and I didn't hear from the foundation, but I know Joe was supposed to send me stuff half an hour ago that I never got. So, um, okay. So if you want to call the meeting to order, Jeff. Okay. Um, uh, it's the January 10th, 2022 Larkspur Library Board meeting. Um, I think the First thing is to do our roll call. If um, uh, Andy, okay. yep, I'm here. Ah, good. Okay, Jonathan, we I can see you. I guess you have to say present. Present and accounted for. I I am also present and accounted for, and I'm in front of. Uh, I love your map background. I got to admit, I have these maps, these weird maps behind me that are art maps of the Pacific Ocean. So I'm a map. I love them. So I like They're them. great. Yeah, cool, yeah, Jeff. Yeah. Um, uh, can I get an approval for or a motion to approve well, the wait, consent? Hang on a second. So, so our, our, um, Armel and um, Amir are both absent, just because yeah. uh, for my my minute taker. <laughs> for, for your records, yes, you have yes. two absent members who maybe will maybe Amir will join. Um, can I get a motion? Can we get a motion to approve the cons consent calendar? I'll make a motion to approve. Second it. All, All in favor? favor. Aye. 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 Okay. Um, and I think does that is does that include the approval of the minutes? Maybe that's a different motion. Yeah, no, that, that's um, part of that. The consent calendar is part the, of it. It's the minutes. Okay. So okay. So oh, here comes Amir. Um, okay. So Amir's present now. Just. <laughs> 
<laughs> Hi, Amir. Hey, Jeff. My apologies for the, the late Zoom notice. I'll make sure they go out faster. And I also need to email assistance as well. So. No worries at all. So we're now to public comments. Um, Jeff? Um, yeah, Amir, we've approved the consent calendar and the approval of the minutes from the last meeting. So any, are there any public, is there anyone public in the waiting room that you there see? There is Frank? nobody a public in the waiting room. Okay. Then we can move to board member reports or comments if anybody has any from our last meeting or any speculation on anything that anyone would like to confess or report. In which case, I think we can. Should we do the library groups now, Franklin? If Joe no, the, is here, the, Joe is not here, and I know he emailed me. He texted me earlier saying he had some exciting news to share, but he hasn't texted. So we'll just give it a few more minutes because he may be just um, behind. Right okay, now. well let's let's go with the, your um, oral report then, and when Joe appears, we can swap that around and have Joe report on his group then. Yeah, well, well I'll speed through this. So as you know, that um. Um, Ari left on the 20, the 23rd was actually their last day in the library. So we're now down one full-time staff member. There's only two of us, um, well, besides me, Teresa and Jan Jessica, there are only three full-time staff members again. Um, last Saturday before, um, not this Saturday, but the Saturday before, one of our employees um, became infected with COVID. And we had a big scare. So on Tuesday last week, we shut down for a couple hours just so we could all be tested. But I realized again that we are very on shaky ground with our minimal staff. That if any of us get sick, um, this will shut down the library down for at least a minimum of five to ten days, depending on the severity. We all dodged a bullet. Um, everybody who worked with the employee who was sick um, tested negative, um, and we came back to work on the fifth day, so we were able to be tested by the fire department and we reopened um, after the tests were done. So uh, it's just really, I, I, my head jumped to the worst case scenario of us having to shut down again, um, just like we did last year in January. Um, and we were pretty much closed for about a month last year. So um, it's just really, um, we don't know. And that with the Omicron going around, as you keep seeing on the news, it's spreading and spreading and more and more outbreaks are happening, but um, we're just still trying to be cautious um, we had planned to have um, the Chinese New Year's event next month in February, but I think at this point we're going to have to cancel it um, because um, city council has still not resumed in-person meetings. It doesn't sound like they will do it for several months, and so um, we're probably not going to be able to do any in-person events for a while as well. We were hoping that February we'd be able to do that one, but it's not looking that well. Um, with the recruitment process, we're trying to hire some library aides. Um, we're working on... Um, recruiting a new circulation supervisor, as well as a community service assistant. Um, the circ supervisor um, position is going before council tomorrow. Um, I'm changing that one around so we can actually make that position a librarian. So we can get three librarians on board. Um, and then it'll sort of make it like the colleges, you know, colleges have an access services librarian. They're the ones who are in charge of circulation. And that's basically the model I was gonna go for because that would give us more um, librarians in-house so when we need to answer questions, and like right now, anytime someone asks for time off, someone has to go out for medical, um, we're really short-staffed, and um, I'm the only other librarian besides the two that we have right now, and um, my time is getting pulled into all sorts of different directions between here and recreation. So we're trying to make the, the as we reshape the library staff, to make it more nimble, and having a librarian in that position will make it a little more nimble, and also keep us in compliance with our marine net um, policies, because we are required to have a librarian in-house at all times as part of our JPA agreement with MarinNet. So, um, and I know a couple of times we have not been there for a couple of hours or something, but we're trying to make sure that we stay on top of that. Um, we're working on the media budgets for um, MarinNet, for the library um, and for the department. So most of ours were pretty good, but the uh, big thing I'm gonna be asking for is staffing. We need to get increase our staffing. We're still working on getting the locker up to date. There's a couple more things, but right now our biggest mystery with the locker is where our email is going. Um, we can put stuff in there and it's supposed to email us like a self-checkout machine, 
but we can't figure out where the problem is. The emails are not going to the to me, like to our tests or to our patrons. So we need to fix that before we can actually make it go permanently live. Um, City installed a light net out there, so there's a, a little more light back there. But I still don't know if we need more on the back of City Hall. So I'm gonna, tonight when I leave, I'll really see how dark it is. But that was um, a big concern. We installed it, and then where it's at, it falls in between two shadows. So it's already dark behind City Hall, but this like was like a little pit. Like the, the machine was, all you would see is the glowing light of the screen and then the little blue light that divides the, both sets of lockers. So we're hoping to get that up and running pretty soon because that will actually help us. Um, my big concern right now is just if we're going to pull back one of our open days, just because we are short staff. I know um, we have staff that are scheduled for um, surgery this month and another librarian who's having to have an emergency dental procedure done. Um, so I'm going to be missing two librarians on one day, but I think that that day is a curbside day, so it's not as bad. But having this open three days to the public right now and being so short staffed as we are has been really difficult. And this happened last week too, when we we're um, just trying to um, do a curbside day, and then there ends up only being two of us in the, to run the whole thing. So it's just getting a little quirky. So I, I know that's one of my big asks for the city is to see if we can increase our staffing levels here. Um, so for that, that's all I have for for the, my actual oral report. Um, go into the next item, which is the old business. <laughs> One of the things that Ari did, our circulation supervisor, they ran all of our statistics. And like I was telling Jeff before the meeting started, we discovered that we we're having issues um, with the report remand. So we have a call in to MarinNet. So hopefully tomorrow we'll get some resolution. There's just something we were running wrong that's not, the numbers weren't adding up correctly. And we think we're just missing a step. So we're supposed to get help tomorrow. So hopefully I'll have the December stats um, all together for you. Um, Next month, the next month's meeting, so you can see that. For the January programming, um, we still have light programming going on. Story time is resumed. Um, we, last Saturday, we had a NASA event with Ron Rosano, um, who talked about the, um, the new Webb telescope that was just launched. And so that is, um, was really fun. We had 65 people attend, but we had over 150 people registered for the, uh, the workshop. So we did send out the recording to a lot of people. So, and I have to check the YouTube channel to see how many people have watched. So. That turned out really well. So, and then it's again, and hopefully next month we'll start up our garden talks with the um, master gardeners. But we're just trying to to get by um, and recover from, you know, the, the holidays. And we're still working on the RFID project too. So that's another thing that we've been doing. So. We can skip the digital services strategy if you want to go to the annual. Franklin, can I ask you a question sure. about? It's Jonathan. Hey, can I ask you a question about the event that happened with the web telescope? Uh -huh. Where on the website would you find it if you wanted to watch a uh, video of it? It's all on our, the library's YouTube channel. So there should be a link on our main page that says Mr. Program, it's on YouTube. And that's where you'll find um, the, all the recordings for all the events that happen. There it is. Good. Yeah, the YouTube link did it. Thanks. Yeah, and we, we are having, when I go back and look at it, we're still, um, I think, one of our garden talks has the most um, uh, views and it's one of, um, it's Terry and I think she's been publishing it. So it has a few thousand views. The next top one is Joe Jennings. His tomato talk is, is really popular as well. So um, Joe is very popular on our YouTube channel. So. <laughs> and he has a question. So let me, he raised it because Joe is now with us too. And I'm going to promote you to the panel, Joe. I don't want to be sour grapes, but um, Tony Gatoni's high click rate is because of a granddaughter <laughs> who likes watching it over and over again. So it's not <laughs> actually fair. I just, I've talked to her about this. There is no way in the world she's had 15,000 views. Well, I thought, so I thought she I'm just pointing out, I'm not competitive. <laughs> I'm not competitive. I am pointing out there's a data entry problem here. We have a, a, a very young child who likes clicking view. So I, I, I will stand back now. You don't need so to keep... I think then that means Joe is our top viewed uh, YouTube channel. I just, star, that would be my take. <laughs> but clearly the numbers don't support that. But I, I understand what's... 
Pardon me? You are our influencer, Joe. <laughs> I just Tony has a, 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 a granddaughter who is very, very tuned into her, which I don't have. So it's, it's not fair. So, um, so, so Franklin, I'll stand back until you want to do. Uh, well, I mean, reports. did you want to do the, um, the reports now, Jeff? Because we had talked about moving yeah. it up earlier. I would yeah. hate to jump the line, but if I can, that would be great. Well, um, yeah, we'd love to hear from you, Joe. So uh, we have um, three things to announce. One, the um, Berlin IJ sponsored an advertisement for us that appeared yesterday in the Sunday paper, which announced uh, we have two matching programs. One was announced last week, the Terry, um, Lori Werner and Terry Berkmeyer million dollar match, um, which went up um, in December. We've already raised 200,000 against it. Great. Um, one of the donors was uh, Catherine and Lawrence Way, uh, council member Way uh, put in a significant amount of money. And then um, in addition, Tina MacArthur and her husband put in a, another significant donation. So um, the Werner uh, Berkmeyer challenge has already raised $200,000. So they will match that with 200. And that's good news. And then today we're announcing um, a $126,000 community matching program. The Werner Berkmeyer program is for $50,000 donors and up. This one is for $1,000 to 50,000. It's um, from the donors, the sponsors are the Larksboro Library Foundation, uh, who gave us $100,000, which is amazing. And they will match uh, any funds, uh, cash donations between now and the end of February. Um, the Larksboro Community Foundation, Larry Chu, former council member, and then uh, Kathy and Brendan Green, who are board members of ours, so this group of sponsors is targeted at the $1,000 to $49,000 donor. And then Lori and Terry are doing the group above it. So um, the reason this is important is we're trying to make sure that we've maximized the capital for the library uh, grant in February. So as it looks right now, um, we ended the year uh, at a total of 2.458. 2.48 million in cash and pledges. And our cash position had swung um, almost $600,000 in December. And so we anticipate that that will swing dramatically now in January, February. So we're on track. In fact, we're um, three months ahead of our fundraising goals. Is, is there a deadline in February for um having an, a total that can be taken to apply for the California state grant? Franklin? I think we had to have a total, but the, if you've been to the site, now they're seeing early 2022 and it's like driving me nuts because um, it's worse than when I talk to them on the phone, they won't give me an exact date. They're just sort of, um, they stream us along. And I still haven't heard back from our first application. Um, the for the what we send in is the um, to get a, a, a benchmark from them but i think if we they're giving us a little more time which is good because yeah. i know joe's like really spun it up and we are getting a lot more and i, we, I think too i'm hoping the city um, will free up some more funds that will actually have a big number to get to ask for but we're still waiting for the main application to open and it hasn't opened yet um, so jeff we've just been using the data that we had in december which was February deadline mm -hmm. and assuming that uh, the city, um, our goal is to break through the $3 million uh, ceiling and, and have cash and pledges in the three to four range. Yeah. And to have our matching programs, if our matching programs are fully subscribed, then um, that's another, we would be mid four by then. Um, but we've just assumed until Franklin tells us there's a new deadline officially, we've kept the February 28th deadline. Okay. And we, we communicate with the city all the time. So they're aware of our fundraising um, status and, mm -hmm. and what's going on. 
Right. Well, and they took all those those original the December and the February dates completely off the, the website. So now it just says early 2022. And they changed that right after the new year. So when the new year came around that first day I was in, I looked and they took it. So we're still not exactly sure when the application process will open um, but or, or when the deadline will be. Me. So I just, I were, everybody, all the directors I've talked to were all sort of um, in this holding pattern waiting for the state to actually make some. some but Franklin, are in the list of people who are viewing, are Larry Wanktoat or uh, Michael Fetterman on in viewing? No, no, we, we have no public attendees. So. Ah, all right. Well, I, I w would like you all, if you get a chance to extend a great big thank you to the Library Foundation. Um, this hundred thousand dollar community matching grant is a really big deal mm -hmm. and it means now that we have the friends of the library the library foundation ourselves and the works for community foundation all on board raising money so yeah. that's a really great thing yeah with a with a pool of people that beforehand might not have been as interested and now should be enthusiastic, plus have the capacity to give in that range between $1,000 and up to, which when matched right. is doubled. Well, and if the state comes in, it could be doubled again. Doubled again. So the, the real goal of the 126,000 is if, it, if we raise that much in, in community gifts between now and the end of February, that quarter of a million dollars, because the 125 matched with 125, could then be matched by the state with another 250. So yeah. that has an impact of $500,000. Yeah. Similarly, on the Berkmeyer and Lerner side, 800,000 that is not yet subscribed there, to the degree to which we can get that subscribed, mm -hmm. that 800 becomes 1.6 million, which if the state matches, that's 3.2 million of incremental money. Mm -hmm. So with the money we already have, we would be north of 5 million. Mm -hmm. So hey, it's Joe. very, yes. Hi, Andy. Hey, hey, it's Andy. Sorry, I'm not on video, but um, will they, will you, you mentioned kind of a pledge. So can you do like a couple year pledge that they'll also match up, up to 50? How does that work? Yes, there's a, a portion of the funds will support pledges of up to two years. And I'm trying to get more people to help sponsor it and to sponsor the pledge side, because usually it's about 50-50 pledges in cash. That's great. Do you want to sponsor, Andy? I'll pledge. I don't want to sponsor. <laughs> we'll talk later. Anyway, so that's all, I mean, um, we have uh, great, great support from the Library Foundation and the Library and the Marks for Community Foundation from uh, elected officials and former elected officials from the community. Um, we're making progress and, um, and I must say, it's really important that Franklin's relationships at the state because at the end of the day, this application, you know, goes into a pile with a whole bunch of others. And I'm hoping that Franklin's helped us figure out what to put in the application and then know how to move it through the state. Because that's our second doubling opportunity. So any other questions for me? Okay, well, that's the news. Um, we're making progress. Great work, Joe. Sure, Joe. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be clicking on that um, tomato talk that you have online. Um, He's got a yeah, bunch of them I, on there too. Joe's one of my my good talkers. So yeah, I'm. I'm <laughs> teaching. Um, oddly enough, I'm taking the Master Gardener program here in King County, in Seattle, and it's very different. Um, <laughs> they seem to like lawns for some reason. Oh, I know. They'll learn. Anyway, everyone, take care. Happy New Year's, and I hope you all stay safe. Jonathan, I hope you and your family are well. Amir, take care. Happy Andy, as always. Jeff, I'll talk to you later. Thank Franklin, bye-bye. Bye, Jeff. Bye. bye. Um, should we move on to the annual letter to the city council from the library board? Yeah. Um, okay. I don't know if 
everybody had a chance to take a look at it, but if, and I'd be happy to add things, edit for clarity, make consistent, get out redundancies, whatever you think. I gave it a, uh, a, a read, Jeff, and look looked good. So, I mean, it was kind of what we talked about touching upon, and I, mean, I think we're good. I thought it was great, uh, Jeff. <clears throat> um, the, some of the matching dynamics that Joe just, you know, reviewed, that could be something to include because it's, it's such a powerful dynamic. It's like, you know, a double double. We, we have money that could get quadrupled. As it well, comes the in. other thing too is that that that's happening this year. So, <laughs> so this is for last year. So, um, yeah, it's for last year, John. Okay. That's right. I, I know what you mean, John. Yeah. I, it's it's good to have all of our funding partners aligned and, and now, if it, especially now they're on the same page again, which is really good because I think that helps the community um, who thought some are like. Uh, I, I know a lot of people have held back from donating because they want to know what the foundation is doing. So I think having all three of the mind um, will give them more power. And I keep reminding the foundation also gives you more marketing maneuverability. So um, even though you might be depleting some of your funds, they'll, it'll come back in the end. So, Well, I appreciate your guys' um, input from the last meeting with the first draft of this thing, which... I think I omitted the foundation, but I, I just alluded to them. And so it was nice to, you know, put them all together as one big happy, all of us as one big happy family raising money and can, you know, in a cohesive way. So that was. Okay, well, I, Franklin, do you know what I should do with this? I forget from, and maybe well, no, uh, if, if you guys are, numbers. I don't know, did, did Andy, did you guys wet signature this last time or did you just send it in digitally, did you? So we did, yeah, we did digitally and we just, um, I put all of our names on it. So, you know, sincerely, Larkspur Library Board of Trustees, you know, Jeff Gunderson, Chair. Um, so just, that was basically how I did it. So okay. if, you, um, if Jeff, I think I have the word version of this because I just make it a PDF to put in the agenda. So if you're okay with it, guys, I'll just send this on to the city clerk tomorrow. That way it'll make it into the city council packet. That'd be great. Um, exactly. That way we get it to the council, you know, ASAP in the packet. Mm -hmm. So that works. Thanks. You're welcome. Okay, thank you. Um, New business? Are we electing new um, officers, Franklin? New chair? New, yeah, um, so it's a, chair? It'll be a new chair and a new vice chair. So, okay. So you guys get to nominate somebody. Armel has asked not to be chair. Um, she was okay with vice chair, but not to be the chair. And I think if they say tradition, it would be Jonathan's turn. <laughs> I would love to nominate Jonathan to be chair of the prestigious. Larks and a Larkspur Library Board. Uh, and is that tour of duty a single year or is it two years? No, it's a single year. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Claire, thank you for clarifying. Yeah, I'll, I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 I will. Aye. Go, oh, I, I accept graciously. When when would that begin? Is that effective immediately for the calendar year then? Yeah, it would take you would basically you start writing the next meeting, the February meeting. So okay. I'm happy to. Um what about uh shall we also nominate a vice chair? Mm -hmm. There aren't too many people who have, who haven't already served. Uh, Amir, how is your appetite for vice chair? I'm happy to. Okay, well, I, I nominate Amir as vice chair. I second that. <laughs> we'll keep the, let's create, keep the progression I'll going. I'll second. Great. You just got to vote on it now. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 
Okay. Congratulations, Jonathan and Amir. Thank you guys. Please, you can certainly, you know, rely on myself and I'm sure Andy as well to pitch in and help you with anything that you think you might need. So yep, absolutely. Great, much appreciated. Um, okay, we already had Joe and Barbara is not here for the friends. Yes, and neither is, is no one from the foundation. No either, so. From the foundation, okay. Um, future agenda items. I, I can't, I don't have any. Does anyone else have things? I'm, you know, curious what will show up in the next um, library director's report, your report, Franklin, for next time dealing with what looks like this awful blip with um, um, with COVID. But I anticipate by the time we meet in February that there will be, you know, light at the end of the tunnel and things will be looking much, much better. So that's the only thing I can think of is how we're going to navigate the springtime with events and different things, but that will be in your library report. Well, yeah, and it's there's I know we had started planning the Easter egg hunt because it was Larkspur's turn for recreation and now I'm like, I'm not sure like, you know, you know stuff that we thought we'd be doing now has sort of gone up topsy turvy so mm -hmm. um, I'm still just waiting for it to calm back down. Um, and yeah. Even with the boosters, I've been horrified that people with boosters have gotten sick. So that Easter egg hunt that Piper is a big hit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and and the other thing is to um, the next four weeks as well as next six and eight weeks for the um, the community foundation and the fundraising and all the different pieces of that puzzle that Joe and Barbara and hopefully Larry can all report on too. Mm -hmm. is, is there a chance we could get someone from the library foundation maybe for next meeting? I mean, that would be awesome just to yeah, it's, also it's thank to them as them, well. Um, normally, they, I think we were meeting too early for the foundation because their normal meetings are not till seven. So I might have to twist um, someone's arm to get them to come early. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that it's been a, a trouble. I've been trying to get them to come. I sometimes they'll they'll give me some to report, but lately I haven't heard back from them. Um, but, but I just I need to just get Larry's ear and then figure out how to get somebody from the board to, to show up and because the whole point is for them to come and talk to you guys. I want them to report yeah. to you to let you know what they're doing. So. Yeah, just to be able to thank them for that. It's just such great news. Yep. Mm -hmm. So for the next meeting, um, it does fall on Valentine's Day. So I don't know if somebody wants to change the date or if you all have things to do on Valentine's Day. <laughs> hmm. I'll suggest that we change the date. <laughs> do you want to move it to February 21st? Is I think that, that works week? for me, yeah. I think that's... Uh... It's ski week, maybe for younger kids, but I can definitely make that work. Oh, that's actually that's President's Day. That's a holiday. That's, so that's yeah. not, no. Oh, good call. So the next day would be um, on the twenty eighth. So that'd be the the fourth um, Monday of the month. The the twenty eighth might be good because we'd have more uh, precise information as to the fundraising efforts and things. Unless, uh, yeah, that's a good point. Twenty eighth works for me. Okay. Twenty eighth works for me. Okay. Same. So I'll update that on our calendars at the next board meeting with the 28th and then and I'll let um, our mail know. So. Let our mail know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, I think that's it, folks. Should, um, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion um, to adjourn. Second. I'll second. Mm -hmm. okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Jeff, thank you for your service as chair. You're very welcome. Thanks for putting up with me. Um, God, enjoy the next few weeks. Get through this. Be well, everybody, and hang in there. And the sun's going to be coming out in the morning more as well as in the evening. So we'll meet in almost in 
California, Northern California springtime the next time we meet. So mm -hmm. I look forward to seeing you all then. Thanks. Wonderful. Thanks, Thank everybody. You. Thanks, Thanks have a good evening. Bye-bye. See you.